Hi everyone, my name is David Cardona. I'm a music producer, sound engineer and sound designer. Today we're going to be looking at instrument tracks, taking special attention to zones and MIDI data filtering so that we can build intricate and complex devices, creating a wide array of possibilities to experiment and interact with instruments and effects. Racks are powerful and flexible tools to work with instruments, effects, and even third-party plugins. You can create and store your own racks with your own MIDI mapping and your own settings, creating quicker workflow opportunities for your own productions. Racks allow multiple device chains to coexist inside of a single track. These chains operate in parallel, meaning that they receive the same input that will be then processed serially by each chain's own devices. The output of all chains is then mixed together at the rack's output, passing the signal to the next device on the track's chain or, if there is none, straight to the track's output. Let's begin. Now, over here I have these three blue tracks. I'd like the three of them to coexist and I'd like to be able to control them simultaneously. Here I have a sawtooth synthesizer, I have a sine wave synthesizer, and here I have a piano pad my grand piano pad, which is included in my Ableton preset library. They all have the same clip, and each individual track sounds like this. Here's our sawtooth. And we're going to our sine wave. And finally, our piano pad. Now, I'd like to add a little more motion to my sawtooth synthesizer and my sine synthesizer, which is why I've added this arpeggiator at the start of each one of my tracks. And they sound like this. And my sine wave. Perfect. Now, I want to start the grouping and the creation of our rack inside of my sawtooth synthesizer. I can select both units, my arpeggiator and my instance of analog, right click on it and we're going to get this drop down menu. We'll notice that it says group or the shortcut command G. We click on that, we're going to see this brackets pop up. Everything that's within the brackets, it's within our own instrument rack. On our left, we'll see these three buttons which are show hide buttons for very specific things in our instrument racks. The first one is to open and close, show and hide our macro knobs. We can show and hide also our chain list and we can show and hide the devices included in the chain that we have selected. I'm going to rename this one from analog to sawtooth. Now I want to go inside of my sine wave synthesizer, select both units, click, drag and drop them inside of the drop and instrument or sample here. We get another instance of analog. We want to rename that sine wave. And now we have our piano pad. We're going to grab it. We're going to do the same process, drag and drop it right here. Rename it piano pad. Great. Now we have three different chains coexisting within our saw synthesizer. We want to rename that perhaps to a more accurate name, something like instrument rack. Oops, there we go. As you probably noticed, I went ahead and deleted both the MIDI tracks because they're now coexisting within my rack. And I also went ahead and blended my sounds together with the mixer section of my chain list, where I can control volume, panning, mute, unmute, solo, and hot swap mode for each individual chain. What's very exciting though, is that I can control simultaneously different parameters that live within different chains by assigning them to macros. The way to do this is by pressing on the map button. We can now open our browser to see our macro mappings window. And now what I want to do is to assign the rate of both arpeggiators, the one of the sawtooth and the sine wave synthesizers to my macro one. And I want to assign the gates, both of them to my macro two. The way to do this would be by clicking on rate and now click on map on macro one and now click on gate and click on map on macro two. I want to go ahead and do the same for my sine wave map 
gate and map. What's very important about the macro mappings window is that in here we can select the range of modulation that is going to be assigned to each one of our knobs. Right here I want to assign the sync rate no lower than 64th notes but no higher than 8th notes for both the arpeggiators. Now if I close my map and my browser we can listen to that in motion and now if I move this you'll notice how the knob is changing inside of the arpeggiator of the sine wave chain but also inside of the sawtooth. Same with the gate. You can also control it with an external MIDI controller. I'm utilizing my Ableton Push right here. You can utilize whatever's available to you. Very cool. I'd like now to get into zones. Zones are very important MIDI data filters that will allow us to select what information is being understood by each individual chain. There are three different zones available to us to filter our MIDI data. Key, Velocity, Chain Select, or we can hide them all together. Key is going to allow us to filter MIDI data depending on the keys that are being sent. So we're going to select B3 and above to modify or to be affecting both our synthesizers and everything below to be affecting our piano pad. I'm going to go inside of the clip and I'm going to duplicate the bottom note a few times by option clicking on a Mac or control clicking on a PC. And now we can see how our MIDI data, the MIDI information is being filtered. We can do the same with velocity. So let's say I want everything above 101 to be solely affecting my sine wave synthesizer and I want everything below 100 to be affecting my sawtooth synthesizer. So let's go back into the mid clip and duplicate the whole progression one octave above and make a slight change in velocity. So let's make the top a little bit louder, 112, that it's within our range and if we play now the upper structure is going to be played by the sine wave and the lower structure by the sawtooth synthesizer. There we go. Let's balance that out a little bit and perfect. Finally we have chain select which is actually a very special zone. Depending on where this orange cursor is we're going to be able to hear whatever chain is allowed to be passed through. Since the cursor is in 1 right now, nothing is passing through. If I take it down to 0, we'll be able to hear all of them. The same thing can be applied in wider ranges. Let's stretch my piano pad from 0 to 40, the sine wave from 0 through 20, and take the sawtooth from 21 all the way up to 40. I can also map the chain selector to one of the macros. Let's do that to have external control over it. And now if we press play, now we just hear the sine wave and as I move up, we'll be able to hear the sawtooth. If I go above 40, we'll stop hearing them all together because no chain is allowed to pass through here. In each one of our three zones, we have this line above, which creates velocity fades. We can create velocity fades for our keys, for our velocities, or for our chain selectors. Let's use our chain selector as an example. Let's drag our piano pad from 0 through 127, our sine wave from 0 up through 80, and then our sawtooth from 32 all the way up through 127. Let's say I want to create some morphing happening in between my sine wave and my sawtooth, so I'm going to drag my fade all the way down through 48, and I'm going to drag this one up all the way up to 72. The longer the fade is, the stronger it will affect the velocities. And so if we go ahead and press play and we play with our channel select knob, we'll slowly go from sine wave through sawtooth. Sawtooth coming in, and now sine wave starts fading out, and sawtooth starts slowly taking over. Finally, I'd like to play from a rack I built myself using all the tools we covered in this video. I hope it inspires you to build your own racks and drive your productions towards new horizons. Thank you very much for watching.